So test screenings have been shown of Denis Villeneuve's Dune movie. In this episode we'll take a look at what was revealed about the new Dune film. The movie they got to see was an incomplete, unfinished version of the film, but it was enough to warrant praise and positive feedback from the audience. Perhaps it was incomplete in the sense that some of the effect shots weren't finished, or they didn't insert the footage of the reshoots in the movie, and things of that nature. According to a series of tweets by Sihaya Dune, when the film had finished, the audience broke out in cheering and applauding. So it must have been quite an experience. This was shown to a general audience, not fans of the film. So it was people who wouldn't have known about the characters, who wouldn't have necessarily known about the story or plotline. It was a fresh audience and it's an audience of people who sign up for test screenings. They didn't even know they were going to see Dune. They were invited to the test screen and they hadn't a clue it was about Dune. This will contain spoilers for Denis Villeneuve's Dune film, so if you do not wish to be spoiled, please watch another video of mine. According to those who went to the test screening of Dune, the version they saw did not include the Water of Life scene for the ending of the film, or the ending between Paul and Chaney, which as I mentioned in a previous video is the ending for Dune. The version they saw ends after the fight between Jameis and Paul, and it ends with Chaney saying something like, this is only the beginning. So in the version they saw, a voiceover with Zendaya ends the film. Spoiler alert, this is how the film should end according to the script, with a voiceover of Chaney saying something different. But this version of Dune that these people saw may point to a different film than the one written in the Dune script. The beginning of the film was also different. There was no voiceover with Gaius Helen Mahame, it was just text on a screen. There was no jumping in the training scene between Gurney and Paul, so they may have toned this fight down, because once they activated their shields, they were also able to jump in the air and almost levitate, so that may have been changed. Gurney Halleck doesn't sing, and Dewey's death is changed. Instead of his head being cut off, his throat is slashed, so they may be testing these different scenes to this audience to see their reactions, to see if they liked those things, and if they liked them that much, they may be going for one thing more than the other. Or perhaps this is now how things are going to be in the final film. Perhaps they don't want Yui beheaded, perhaps they don't want Gurney Halleck to sing, and perhaps they don't want jumping in the training scene between Gurney and Paul. The runtime of the Dune test screening was approximately 2 hours and 10 minutes, but there are conflicting reports on this. The audience of the test screening praised the sets and how grand they were, and according to the audience the sets were really stunning. The use of the voice, the convincing controlling sound that Paul, Jessica and all the Bene Gesserit use sounded very eerie and alien according to the audience. So this is what they're going for. They're not going for a stern convincing voice, they're going for this ethereal eerie sound. Some audience members also say that this is a finished and an unfinished cut, so people don't really know whether or not this is a complete film that they saw or whether it's just an unfinished cut. But I think that the absent opening with just text is because the VFX for that opening isn't complete yet, because the whole opening sequence is just a voiceover of Gaius Helen Mohame and visual effects moving and showing. It's almost like the opening of Black Panther and that took a very long time to render those effects. There's a whole story on the difficulty of that sequence. So I think that's why the opening was just text. And if anything else was absent from the film, like the levitating scenes in Gurney and Paul's training fight, is because those special effects are not complete yet. So that's probably why they didn't see it in the film. One of the audience members praised the Baron the most, saying he was his favourite character. A fantastic performance and a really fun villain. Which I think is strange. They may have retained a little of the larger than life attributes of the Baron, even though Villeneuve's approach is to make him more cunning, conniving and a master planner. And the same audience member compared the Baron to Darth Vader and Palpatine combined. So this audience member must have been aware of Star Wars. But I think one of the most interesting comments to come out of this is about the score of the film Dune by Hans Zimmer. Apparently it is really good, really unique and has a lot of Middle Eastern musical influences. 
which is very interesting to hear. Now in the Dune trailer we know that there were some Middle Eastern instruments used in the trailer music. We heard the duduk I believe and that was an indicator that Hans Zimmer was going to be using Middle Eastern instruments but to hear that there's a lot of it and there's going to be a lot of Middle Eastern musical influences in the film that's really interesting and honestly I thought that that was where the Middle Eastern influences were going to reside. They were going to be moved to the Dune score in the background, not really be a prominent feature in the film, but something subtle in the background, subtle in the score. The undertones of Dune would be Middle Eastern in nature, and that's why I think that the Hans Zimmer soundtrack would have worked well with Middle Eastern influences in the musical score. Apparently, we're going to be getting leitmotifs in Hans Zimmer's Dune score, and the leitmotif is essentially a recurrent theme for a particular person or situation. So I think this is going to be leitmotifs for the different houses and also possibly for different characters. One good example of leitmotifs, I believe, is the Lord of the Rings soundtrack because there were different themes for the elves, for different characters like Boromir, for Frodo, for Gollum. So they all had their own unique leitmotifs, their own musical signatures, which made you know that this was a theme for a particular character or a particular city or a particular situation. And I'm not sure that Hans Zimmer has done this before. I don't recall Hans Zimmer doing something like this before, perhaps in Gladiator with the main villain and the main hero, but I'm not sure that he's done it to this extent. I mean, there's going to be musical representations. There's going to be light motifs for the Bene Gesserit, probably the Harkonnen, the Atreides, the Fremen, perhaps for the Dune planet itself, for the Sardaukar, and for individual characters like Jessica, Paul Muad'Dib, Duncan Idaho, and his heroism. So I think this was definitely a huge undertaking for Hans Zimmer. But but I do believe that he can definitely pull this off. The audience who got to see the test screening have said that the score is a mixture of electronic, orchestral instrumental music with weird ethereal vocals in it. And I really hope those ethereal voices are either Lisa Gerard, who accompanied Hans Zimmer's Gladiator soundtrack and worked with him on other projects such as I think the Bible series, if I'm not mistaken. Or I'm hoping Azam Ali, who was also the voice of the Children of Dune soundtrack by Brian Tyler, who made the beautiful track in Nema Nushif. There will be bagpipes in the soundtrack as well, which kind of gives the soundtrack a royal feeling because the bagpipes are linked to monarchy, government, military, and things of that nature. And apparently the opening music is very eerie and unique, and it creeped people out. There's some strange clicking noises, and we hear alien-type horns used throughout. So I think those horns are going to be the signature Hans Zimmer's bois sound, you know? <laughs> But obviously with a different twist because now it's a sci-fi, it's on Dune. So I think it's going to be an epic sound that's going to resonate throughout the film. Again, people who haven't a clue what Dune is have said that this film is like a 9 out of 10. And they knew nothing about Dune. And the general feeling is that Stellan Skarsgård, Timothy Chalamet and Oscar Isaac gave the most outstanding performances in the movie. So one of those three is definitely going to steal the show. And I think my feeling tells me that Stellan Skarsgård is going to steal the show. Don't get me wrong, I think Timothy Chalamet is going to portray Paul Atreides very well. But I think Stellan is going to steal the show. But personally, I think I'm going to like Javier Bardem Stilgar, although I know he isn't in the film very much nor is Zendaya for that matter as Cheney. One user on Letterboxd reviewed the film from the test screening and they said this movie will be one of the best soundtracks and cinematography of the year. Another wrote this was amazing, got a sneak peek from the director last night, really amazing work and can't wait to see it in cinemas once Covid settles down. So that's all I wanted to share with you. What do you guys think of this test screening? Would you have liked to have gone? And what do you think of this news? Let me know in the comment section below. I will be featuring art in my videos. Today's art pick is by Maxim Shastny. I love the blue within blue eyes and the strangeness of the eyes drawn. The veiny still suit is very interesting and the texture of the skin is very Dune accurate due to the scarcity of water. The design of these Fremen feels very book accurate and I think it was very well done. 
if you like this channel please don't forget to like share and subscribe and click the bell so that you can be first to be notified of new videos you can join this channel as a member where you'll receive exclusive access to secret information and more thank you to my patreons and my channel members for your support and until next time see you soon